Hello guys, welcome back to another update video on my multiplayer game. I'm sure we've all played a multiplayer game before, and you're shooting at an enemy player with your crosshair clearly over their body, and yet your shots don't hit, and instead you end up getting killed. I had this exact issue in my multiplayer game that I'm developing. If you're new here, this is my multiplayer game I'm working on. A first person action shooter game with multiple game modes that can be played in a variety of team sizes. I'm sure you had the feeling, but the reason why shots in multiplayer games sometimes don't hit is due to network latency. Most AAA multiplayer games have lag compensation systems in place to counter this network latency. Let's start by understanding why network latency causes your shots to not hit in the first place. To demonstrate what's happening, I'm going to use some good old CSGO footage. Let's start by looking at what's happening with no lag compensation. We shot directly on the enemy, but the hit didn't register. Again, this is due to network latency. It takes a certain amount of network delay for your messages to travel from your computer to the server. And the farther away you're located from the server, the worse this network delay gets. This means that when you shoot, it takes a couple of milliseconds for the message to actually reach the server and execute the shooting. And by the time it reaches the server, the enemy will have already moved out of your crosshair from the server's perspective and the shot will miss. This is because where you're seeing the enemy locally is not the enemy's real position on the server. Now the question is, how do games fix this issue because most multiplayer games have decent hit registration? These games all use some sort of lag compensation. In my case though, I didn't have any lag compensation systems in place for shooting yet. So that meant that the hit registration was absolutely terrible in my game. So it's time for me to implement a system to counter this latency. This system is called Collider Rollback. Let's look at the CSGO footage again, this time with their lag compensation enabled to see how its Collider Rollback system works. You can see that this time, after a delay, our shot was actually registered as a hit. This time, when the server received our shoot message, by using the latency on that message, it rolled back the enemy's collider history to the position they were in when the shot was actually fired on our computer. You can see that the rolled back enemy colliders are represented by the blue wireframes. And since these rolled back colliders now overlap with our cursor, the enemy hit is now actually correctly registered. I'm going to leave my simple explanation of collider rollback right there and instead point you towards the video I got this CSGO footage from where lag compensation is explained in even more detail. Big thanks to Devin DTV for letting me use some of his footage. Go check out his lag compensation explanation after the video. So now that we hopefully have at least a general idea of why collider rollback is required to make the hit registration in my game actually reliable, I went ahead and implemented it into my own game. So here we are looking at the game from the server's perspective with the client in the bottom right. Let's go ahead and shoot this enemy. As you can see the shot hit and the rolled back colliders are represented by the green wireframes. Let's take a look at that shot again in slow motion. The shot was fired on the client right about now and a few milliseconds later the message reached the server, the server spawned in the rolled back colliders and the shot was registered. And let's take a look at that one more time with the sniper rifle. Once again, the shot was a hit. Awesome. During our last playtest over on my Discord server, we had the chance to test out the improved hit detection, and I think everyone agreed that it's much better now, which is great because it was really hard to hit each other before. Moving on, the next thing I did was make some gun recoil changes. Some of my playtesters and myself included thought that the gun recoil was a little too simple and felt weird to control. Before, the gun recoil system just rotated the camera vertically and horizontally at a random amount each shot indefinitely. A big issue with this is that after a while you would just be shooting at the sky. In order to figure out what needed changed with the recoil, I decided to look at how it was done in other games. A game that I used to play a lot is Rainbow Six Siege, and I really like how the recoil worked in it, so I decided to study how it worked. There were two major things that I noticed that its recoil system did differently. The first was that the recoil eventually maxed out and didn't continue moving the camera vertically until you were looking at the sky. The second was that the cursor moved back to the starting point when you stopped shooting. 
with these differences in mind, I went ahead and implemented these recoil features into my game's recoil system. And here's how it looks now. You can see that the recoil eventually maxes out vertically, and also when I stop shooting, the cursor returns to the starting position. These new recoil changes were once again tested in our last playtest, and I think it feels a lot better now. The next thing I did was make some changes to the scoreboard. I slightly changed the overall scoreboard UI style to match the UI changes I made in the last update. The most noticeable being that the background of each score element is the team color now, rather than just the player username text. In terms of the scoreboard system, I implemented two additional score values that are now kept track of, these being player assists and a game mode specific scoreboard value. I think the assists are self-explanatory, but if you were the last one to do damage to a player before they are killed by another player, you will get an assist for that. Now the game mode specific scoreboard value is a little different. The only game mode that uses it right now is the capture the flag game mode, and you might have guessed, but this custom scoreboard value for capture the flag would be the amount of flags you have captured for your team. You can see that in the scoreboard the header displays flags and the amount that each player has captured as the values. This custom scoreboard value can now be used in any future game modes that I implement if they require some sort of custom value to show in the scoreboard. Alright, the last thing I'm going to do is showcase a bunch of small adds and tweaks. Starting off, I implemented a slight hand sway when holding an item. Items on the ground will now have a slight highlight when you are hovering over them and they are within range to be picked up. I added some more admin commands. Slash balance teams will rebalance the teams to have an equal amount of players on each team. Slash ghost will make your player invisible for all other players. And lastly, I prevented jumping continuously from holding down the jump button to reduce the jump spamming, and I reduced the max jump height because it was a little unrealistically high before. That's it for this update. Join the Discord server using the link below. Click on the playlist in the end card to watch all my other update videos. I hope you like this update video, and I hope to see you in my next one. Until then, thanks for watching. Zippy out.